Hello folks, Kevin Kelleher again. Here to talk to you today about blunt end sharp end. Blunt end sharp end is a, a neat way to look at addressing uh, issues in our operations. Uh, this is going to be new for some of us. Um, typically we're pretty good at placing blame on the people who were involved in the incidents. And what I'm going to talk to you about is all those things that have to be in place for those incidents to occur. That's the blunt end sharp end. Let me begin with a little bit of a story here, if you don't mind. This comes to me from a friend of mine who works in risk management at a hospital. And she tells me uh, they had a very unique opportunity one time. And this is a very, very uh, emotional story I'm about to tell you. It's about a hospital who had a heart transplant patient, a person who was waiting to get a heart in this hospital. This hospital also had uh, a, a person who was injured, fatally injured in an accident come into their emergency room. And they had a very unusual situation here where they had a person who was an organ donor offering up a heart and underneath the same roof where they laid a person waiting for one and he was right on the line of things as the order of those things go. So they actually harvested the heart and transplanted it that day in one roof. A very unusual occurrence. Uh, very exciting event for them. Huge press event for them. What was the surprise though was this, once they harvested the heart and, and cut the other heart out of the, of the recipient and put it in and, and did all the stuff they usually do, the duct tape and, and the, the baleen wire and stuff and the super glue. When they released the valves to see if there was any, any, any leakage to make sure that their, their connections were good, the heart changed. And this person described it as, it's like it turned to red cottage cheese right in front of us because that's what happens when you put the wrong type, blood type, heart, in a recipient organ. Big tragedy. You have now a, a hope that a, a donor heart would give life to somebody else, and it didn't. And more important, you have the person who hoped to get an improved quality of life through a transplant who's no longer with us. That's not what hospitals are for. So they had to deal with this. The point of the matter is this. Who would you hold accountable for this if it were a police setting? The surgeon? A nurse working beside the table? Hospital administrator? Or the person who working in the middle of the night did one of a thousand blood type assessments like they always do? They do as many of these as we write tickets. Certainly you go to the person who did the blood typing, the person who says this heart is this type and therefore it's a good match for this person. In policing, what would we do with a person like that who was at the very focal point, all the attention comes to this person for the fault? Would we punish? Would we reprimand? Would we retrain? Would we hold them out for a little bit of public humiliation? Perhaps, perhaps all of those. What this hospital did was something totally different. They addressed the lab tech, of course, what they did was they brought that person in and put this person through an employee assistance program to make sure that she wasn't bearing any undue guilt for having been involved in this thing at all. They cared for her as an employee, which is very good. Then they met with the family and they were forthright and upright about that. But my main point about this is this. They said, what happened here isn't her mistake. It is, but that kind of mistake is likely to happen anytime. And we can yell and make a big deal out of this and hold her up for embarrassment and hoping other people will be a little more attentive in their tasks. But if that's the case, we are hoping that the, the weakest link, the human employee, will always be perfect for us. And we are humans, we're flawed, we make mistakes. So what the hospital did was they addressed blunt end factors. I want you to consider this, the employee is the sharp end. And as you see by our diagram here, the sharp end is at the bottom of the triangle. And the sharp end is who was involved. They attract the press in our business. They attract the wrath of internal affairs and everybody else, and, and, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're shunned a bit. But what the hospital did here was to pay attention to the blunt end factors, all those other things that had to be in place. As you see here on our slide, blunt end factors include training, uh, deployment of tools, policy, all these kinds of things that are in place here. If you want to ensure 
that the potential for future problems is taken care of, you need to address blunt end factors because people are going to make mistakes. And when you focus on the person, you are focusing on the part that is expected to fail. I know a gentleman one time, unfortunately, put a 12-gauge slug into a woman's leg believing it was a beanbag. Uh, did so under orders and did the procedures, everything right, except he, he loaded the wrong shell. Well, we're taught not to do that. But you know what else we're taught? We're taught with the Remington 870 shotgun how to load that baby up with double up buck every single day. We make it squad ready. It is muscle control. It's mine autopilot. And, and you know, in the middle of the night when these things happen, our, our light ability goes. We don't read colors so well. We read in gray. And, and, and sometimes you don't see the shell quite right. Add to that the stress. We tell you in training, look at your hand and see what kind of a round you have. What else do we say about shotgun training? Learn how to load without taking your eyes off the threat. It's conflicting themes like this. So he puts this thing into her hand and then all of a sudden, what happens? In, I'm sorry, into her leg and what happens? The usual stuff, uh, a little discipline. We get a little retraining, a little public humiliation and nobody wants to go through what this officer went through. And of course, this big shock of, there you go. There's your poster child. Don't be like this guy. Don't goof up. I, had, I was no longer with that agency, and somebody came to me several months later saying, uh, Kevin, I almost shot somebody the other night. Tell me about it. And uh, he was in a similar situation. He had shot three bean bags out of a four-round tube, and all of a sudden the guy complied. As he unloaded the shotgun, the fourth one, double lot buck. Same situation. Misloaded bean bag deployment. The agency didn't know about that because this is what's called a near miss. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. The thing didn't go off. Nobody was shot with double lot buck, but we're that close to it. But the agency doesn't know about it because this person doesn't want to go through what the first officer went through. When you focus on sharp end and ignore blunt end factors, near misses don't get reported. And you don't know how often you almost fail because of that. Blunt end sharpen forces you to focus on blunt end factors to ensure, to fail safe operations to ensure these things don't happen. What's the answer here? I think you all know. You relegate the shotgun, or at least a particular shotgun, to less lethal function. You put it in the trunk and you paint it pink or whatever you want to do. But you separate that crap out. You fail safe the systems. You bring in a carbine into the squad gun and so you say, this is your long gun. Shotgun relegated to less lethal. If you want to have a shotgun in the squad car that is lethal, have two. There's ways to fail safe this thing. And this isn't about firearms. This is about everything we do. It's how we drive. It's how we do this, how we do that. Everything is suspect to blunt end, sharp end factors. I want to tell you a little bit about where this comes from. Uh, this, this comes from a, a, a couple of guys who studied industries who have tremendous potential for failure but have great, great safety records. And they went in and find out why. And, and these, the, these industries were uh, uh, flight deck operations of U.S. naval aircraft carriers, uh, United States uh, nuclear uh, power plants, and United States air traffic controllers. Uh, you hear stories, of course, about every one of these three things, but overall, when you consider the volume of business they handle, it's pretty good. And they found that they each solve the blunt end factors in different ways. Some do it through technology, some do it through training, some do it through redundancy. Nuclear power plants. In a control room, there are two shifts, just like a submarine, six month deployments. Uh, you'll work in the real control room for one week. and the second week, you go to the practice control room where they drill you steady. Because usually things go pretty good in the real control room. And we don't get that many emergencies to practice and maintain our skills on, so we've got to simulate those activities through training. That's how they avoid that problem. Air traffic controls, although you hear a lot about it, technology is the big saver there. And I like this one here. I want you to take a look at this slide because nothing says redundancy like this slide. This is flight deck operations on a United States aircraft carrier. You see here a couple of guys dressed in yellow, you got a couple of guys dressed in green. These are teams. Both guys in yellow are looking at the same thing. 
indicating thumbs up. The pilot says, I see two people looking at the same important factor and they're both calling it good to go and telling me without consultation that they see it as good. The two guys with the green, same thing. Two separate observations, not acting in concert, acting at the same time, however, to see it, interpret it, call it good to go. That's two separate good to goes. This, this pilot takes off with confidence because there's a redundancy in the system here. What did our folks do back at the hospital with the lab tech who worked in the middle of the night and made a very significant mistake? They fixed that through redundancy. They didn't retrain her. They didn't discipline her. They said that, you know, when you do routine tasks all the time, eventually you're going to make a mistake. And so they fixed it the right way. They fixed not the person, but the blunt end factors that contributed to that.